Trevor Lawrence versus Zach Wilson. It's finally here. What's good, everyone? Jets take off. Jets, Jaguars, the battle of two pretty bad teams. The Jaguars, the Urban Meyer fiasco. You know, I thought the Jets season has been a disaster. The Jaguars has been even more of a disaster. So we will see which team is worse this Sunday. But the main storyline is Trevor Lawrence versus Zach Wilson. Trevor Lawrence has cooled down big time. I believe he's only had one passing touchdown in like the past five games or something crazy like that. He's just inconsistent with his accuracy as of lately. I think it's mechanics and also coaching playing a role into it. Their Jaguars offense is just really bad from what I hear. They have a lot of three and outs. And, I mean, they haven't really started using James Robinson until now. So we'll see what they can do, kind of bringing him back onto the team and utilizing him as a weapon. And as it goes for the Jets, I mean, this team is banged up and we got hit with the COVID bug big time. I think we have 17 players in COVID protocols right now, and probably more than half of them won't even be playing. And that doesn't even include the players that just have not practiced as of late. So we might be sending out a, a practice squad team to play the Jaguars. But the good thing is the Jaguars are not the best team in the world. So it's kind of fair. This is the definition of a tank bowl. So how, what does this game mean? So what does this game mean for both teams, for the Jets, they have a lot to prove because this team, and Robert Sala specifically, who will not coach this game, by the way, at least that's what we think as of right now because of COVID, so if not, it'll be Ron Middleton, a tight ends coach. Imagine him being our head coach. Imagine if he got the win. Yeesh. Robert Sala would have a fire lit under his ass for that. But anyways, this game for the Jets means a lot because the Jaguars are an even team. We are just as bad as they are, but they should be worse than us. So if we go out and lose this game to the Jacksonville Jaguars at home with their struggling offense and all of the Urban Meyer drama surrounding them, the Jets are officially, I'd, I'd call them the worst team in football this season. I'm going to be honest. I think they would be the worst team in football. They only have three wins. One of them was an ugly one against the Texans. The Titans game, that was awesome. The Bengals game, that was pretty awesome too. But still, other than that, I mean, this team is not good and the coaching is let down. So we have to win this game. It's must win. I don't care if we have COVID injuries or just all around injuries. The rest of the league deals with injuries. You can only use it as, you can only use it as an excuse up to a certain point. But you just got to play. You got to put a good quality product on the field. So the Jets have to do that. It will be harder without the head coach, even though Robert Sala has not done the best job this season. Now for the Jaguars, what does it mean for them? Well, they have the number one overall pick. So if they win this game, they may no longer have that number one overall selection. It could alter their franchise. Not only that, but if they win, it could also alter their franchise in a better way where they could potentially get on a winning streak. So it could kind of change the culture there. So for them, you know, a win would be nice, but fans probably are not rooting for one. So it also means a lot for Trevor Lawrence's development since this is, I believe, game two um, with, or this is, gonna, this is gonna be the first game where Brian Schottenheimer will be calling plays. That's right, Brian Schottenheimer, former Jets offensive coordinator. So it'll be a fun little revenge game. We'll see what he pulls out of the bag. Uh, I'm interested to see because he, he got a lot of scrutiny in Seattle for what he did. So we'll see what he does with Daryl Bevel's offense. But game plan-wise, how will the Jets beat the Jaguars? Well, their run defense is actually pretty good. So what is it going to take? It's going to take some passing. We're going to have to throw the football. It's going to be hard with some injuries. Since our wide receiver room struggles to win one-on-one -on -one in man coverage, but thankfully the Jaguars, after trading C.J. Henderson, their cornerback room is shaky too, so it they might have a chance. This is the week for Denzel Mims to show up or not show up, and depending on the result, he's either going to be here next season or he's going to go bye-bye. That's the only thing I can tell you for sure. So we got to get Zach in a rhythm. You know, let's do some short passing. Screw it, because although Josh Allen hasn't been practicing for the Jaguars since he's a little bit hurt, we can't have him taking sacks. Elijah Vera Tucker might not play. There might be increased pressure on Zach Wilson. So let's get him in a rhythm. Quick passes. Let's make sure he's accurate and not bounce passing him off the grass. Screen plays. Slants. Mesh. Any simple concepts. We have to do something like that. And we also have to run the football. We have to stick to running the football. because We'll run it a few times, but then we just abandon it completely. And that's, that's why we struggle offensively in one half or the other. It's because we don't run the football. So we have to play complementary 
a 50-50 balance. That's what I want to see. Like, I want to see us pass a lot, but I understand that we have to actually establish the run first. Play action. The Jaguars are a young team. Their safeties will bite. Their linebackers will bite. Miles Jack might not play one of the better linebackers in the league, so we have to take off. We have to take advantage of that. It's going to rely on Michael Floyd to put together a full four-quarter offensive game plan. Has to work. It's tough. I'm not going to lie. It is tough, given that there's no Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. But this will really speak volume to whether he can potentially be one of the better offensive minds in the league for the next few years. Now, for defensively, I think it's pretty simple. We have to stop the run. We have to. We cannot let James Robinson rush for over 100 yards or else I think we lose. I think we will lose if we give up that many yards to a running back again. Now, James Robinson's very good. I'm not going to lie. But if we know that they will probably head into this game knowing that the Jets' run defense has been probably one of the worst in history the past few years, so what we have to do is run the football. If we can stop that, oh my god, it, it would increase our chances so much. Because it puts more pressure on Trevor Lawrence, too, who struggled as of late. So if the running game isn't there for them, they'll have to kind of play hero ball. And he hasn't really done a good job at doing that in Jacksonville. So that's how the Jets can win this game. This is massive, you know? I know it's the three-win team versus the two-win team, but it means a lot to both clubs. And it would just be really just the icing on the cake if the Jets lost this game. It would be the icing on the cake, and it would, wow. I, you know, I don't even want to think about it. I, I'm hoping for a win. Last time I was at MetLife, we won. We beat the Steelers. It was the last game before COVID, so I hope the same thing happens. Let me know what you guys think. I also want to see Zach Wilson just, just play a good game. Accuracy. If he throws an interception, so be it. Just want to see more progress. That's what we need is progress, progress, progress. Because if we get blown out by the Jacksonville Jaguars, Oh man, the media will erupt, the fans will erupt, and I will lose my mind if we get blown up by the Jaguars and I have to witness that. So let me know what you guys think. Appreciate all and everything, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.